I'm Funky Monkey. Welcome to my house of love! And once again, we return to that turbulent decade, the 1980s. Now, we've all heard of Star Trek, Ghostbusters, and Indiana Jones, but I'd be willing to bet that Buckaroo Banzai is a name that you haven't heard. Permit me then to introduce you to this forgotten cult classic and an American legend that should have been. Released in 1984, Buckaroo Banzai, or to give it its full title, The Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai Across the Eighth Dimension, is the tale of a multi-talented adventurer and his entourage, who are tasked with stopping one group of aliens from threatening another. There are also several subplots, side characters, and recognisable faces. Sadly, this movie faced stiff competition at the box office from the likes of Star Trek III, Ghostbusters, and Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. But is this movie a confused mess? Or an oscillation overthruster in the rough? There's only one way to find out! So let's get ready to rock and roll with the Hong Kong Cavaliers in... The Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai! I present Dr. Buckaroo Banzai. His first love was brain surgery. Actually, Buckaroo's first love was particle physics. But we'll get into that mess a little later on. Now there's a lot of ground to cover, so I'll be filling you in as we go along. I should mention, firstly, that on Buckaroo's travels, he amassed around him a group of scientists and thinkers who also dabbled in music and became his band. These are his entourage, the Hong Kong Cavaliers. But today he's driving a test vehicle of his own design. Where is it? Through a mountain? This improbable feat is actually achieved through the modern miracle of the oscillation overthruster. The science of it is a little bit complicated, so we'll leave it for now and get into it later. But he manages to make it out the other side. He's gone through it. He's gone through the mountain. But our story really begins in 1938, when scientists Emilio Lizardo and Tuichi Hikita experiment with passing through solid matter. But oh dear, Lizardo goes too soon and gets stuck. And when they pull him out, he's not himself. And back in the present, he's not been himself since. Well, if Dr. Lizardo isn't himself, then who is he? He is, in fact, Warfin, Lord of the Tyrannical Red Electroids, an all-around evil the equal of any tyrannical extremist you'd care to mention. Buckaroo and his friends are also part-time musicians. And at a gig in New Jersey, we meet Penny Pretty. Penny's about ready to cash in her hard luck life, but the fates have other ideas. Poor Miss Pretty's having a rough time of it at the minute. Down on her luck. Lost her spot at the mission. Can't even pawn off her luggage, poor dear. Lucky thing for her then that Buckaroos wandered into her life. The next morning, the Cavaliers pick up their newest member, Sydney, New Jersey, Zwy Bell. And Buckaroo is still trying to solve the riddle that is Penny Pretty. Around. Hey, me too. Dr. Banzai gives a press conference for his multi-dimensional escapade. Now then, remember the oscillation overthruster from earlier? It's explained here that what it actually does is reposition the molecules in solid matter to be able to allow solid objects to pass through one another. It's your basic vibrational planes of reality kind of thing but with some pseudoscience guff about the 8th dimension laid on top. But a telephone interruption, supposedly from the US president himself, reveals... Evil! Pure and simple from the 8th dimension! Burn up! 
the Lectroids flee, but our hero pursues. And somewhere in the mountains, an opposing group of Lectroids sent their emissary. So yeah, there are apparently two sets of Lectroids. Or at least two, if there are any more types of Lectroids they're not shown in this movie. All we see are the Red Lectroids and the Black Lectroids. The Red Lectroids being led by the tyrannical Warfin, and the Black Lectroids being led by the seemingly benevolent Endor. And Buckaroo rescues Professor Hikita. Black Lectroid Emissary Parker rolls up to the Banzai Institute with a very important package. But as dawn approaches, the Red Lectroids attempt to recover the Oscillation Overthruster. Who's the wise guy? And when Buckaroo returns... Parker's package turns out to contain a dire warning from Black Electroid Commander Emdahl. You see, Warfin was a tyrant. You know, a real nasty piece of work. So, the Black Electroids rebelled, overthrew him, and exiled him to the 8th Dimension, presumably for crimes against Electroidity. But with this successful test of the Oscillation Overthruster, Warfin sees a way to return to the 8th Dimension, collect his forces, and retake Planet 10. And there's still the little matter of Penny Pretty to work out yet. Okay, so, let's get a few things straight here. You see, Penny is the long-lost twin sister of Buckaroo's first wife, Peggy. Peggy was murdered by the vile criminal Hanoi Zahn. Hanoi Zahn was also involved in the death of Buckaroo's parents many years prior while they were investigating a dimensional theory. All of this may or may not have been mentioned and even resolved in Buckaroo Banzai Against the World Crime League. Had it ever actually been made, which it wasn't. But anyway, I thought it was important to explain all this. And now, the next scene. But then, the Red Lectroids attack! In a pinch, Professor Hikita gives the Overthruster to Penny for safekeeping. Which goes about as well as you'd expect when she's kidnapped. Warfin taunts our hero, believing his victory already assured. Yeah, I'm guessing that's going to go about as well as you'd expect. Remember folks, don't count your Lectroids before they're hatched. And so the stage is set for our finale, as Buckaroo enters the Red Lectroid front company, Yo-Yo Dine. Where he's immediately taken hostage. But all is not lost, as the Hong Kong Cavaliers follow. And while they inadvertently cause a diversion, Buckaroo heads off to rescue Penny. But Penny's fate will have to wait, as the Red Electroids prepare to board their ship. Luckily for humanity, Warfin's overthruster fails. And somewhere over New Jersey, Parker and Banzai put an end to the Red Electroid menace. And so our movie ends with a shocking defibrillation, which revives Penny just in time for a final embrace. Thus ends another adventure for Buckaroo Banzai. And actually, I'm going to put this one into the House of Love. This is a strange one. The writing's solid enough. The premise of a genius polymath adventurer who dabbles in music puts me in mind of pulp hero Doc Savage, Man of Bronze. Only somewhat more cerebral. As a comedy, the only comic performance I could point out was that of Christopher Lloyd's Big Bootay, whose insubordinate whining was very much at odds with the serious tone of the rest of the movie. The performances are solid enough too. Peter Weller's central character, Buckaroo Banzai, is an unflappable fellow, mostly sensible, and a deadpan snarker. The somewhat ensemble cast of mostly unknowns do seem to have genuine chemistry, as the Hong Kong Cavaliers make for a believable group of modern-day gentlemen adventurers. And while Ellen Barkin's Penny Pretty is underutilised, 
and mostly oscillates between miserable and offended, I could still see potential for what she could have been, if the promised sequel had been made. The flow of this movie is straightforward enough as well. MacGuffin is coveted, stolen, and recovered, while the good guys solve the mystery and beat the bad guys, with a side plot of a long lost twin sister to Buckaroo's lost love. And it all washes over me well enough, but it feels like the movie from a long running TV series, or a second or third sequel that we came in late to. And that's the main problem, is that co-creator Earl McRoush half wrote several unfinished scripts for this character, and created a whole history and backstory which we just don't see here. So necessarily, a lot of this premise needs to be set up, and the movie tells a lot instead of showing. But for what we do have, it's very enjoyable, even if it is faintly ridiculous. It's played dead straight for the most part, and all the better for it. In some respects, it might even be ahead of its time. Overall then, it may be just a fragment of a larger world, but from this one adventure alone, I can heartily recommend the adventures of Buckaroo Banzai across the 8th dimension, and perhaps one day, we will get to see him battle the World Crime League. I've been Funky Monkey, wishing you good days and great entertainment. And remember, no matter where you go, there you are. So long, folks.